The last plugin for the day that we'll look at is the camera plugin. This, of course, will work best on a real device because these have a camera. When you set up the virtual device, there's a spot in there for you to activate a camera or not. When you're creating that virtual device definition, remember my handout says if you're doing this on a machine, on a, on a laptop that has a webcam, select the webcam feature and then the virtual device will tap into it. If you're running your virtual device on a on a computer without any web camera, you can select emulated, but then it's a very basic camera feature. There's like a little red uh, square bouncing around to simulate a camera. And if you're running this on Taco Run browser, if you've got a web camera plugged in, Google Chrome will pop up to say allow using the web camera. If you don't have one, you won't get that. So to fully test this, the best result will be on a real device. So we'll see what we need to do. If we look at the camera section, it's basically um, navigator.camera and such, although this one's a little bit more complex. We have camera, we have get picture, we have on error, on success, we have all of these possibilities. Um, what we can do is it can take a photo and just show the raw data of the photo. That is, use the raw data to show the photo. It could instead um, take a photo, save it to the memory card, and display the photo based on the location on the memory card. Because simply showing it as the raw data is going to be temporary. As soon as you close the app, the data is gone, unless you specify to also save it to your camera roll. What we could do instead of taking a photo, we could have it load a photo. So that will check the device's camera roll or album to load a pre existing photo. Uh, it goes on to say it works on all the platforms basically. So either the data will be, the photo will be a string, which is a base 64 encoded photo. It's going to be a long string. Your, your photo is going to be the raw data or a string representing the file location on the storage. You can do whatever you want with that, with that data then, with that picture. You can render it in an image tag, as we'll, we'll see the example. You can save it like local storage. Remember when we talked about local storage? You can save it there. Your app is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as, you're saving, as people are saving photos. You can save it to something called Lawn Share. I haven't really used it, but it's another external way to save data. You can save it to Pouch, which is something we will work with uh, soon, which is the database. Post it to a remote server. That assumes you have some server where you can upload your data to. We have, um, we can set quality and all of that. How does it work? So here's the basic operation. Navigator dot camera dot get picture and then it has three required parameters camera success camera error camera options camera success is a is a callback is the name of a function as a callback so right here we specify a function without parentheses so we need to define a function. What happens if there's if we can if we successfully get the picture? If we don't successfully get the picture, then we must have failed in getting the picture. So we need a callback function to deal with that. And then we have various camera options that we could feed it in a in a JSON format. We will talk about JSON later, but it's sort of like an array in that it's multiple values at once. So let's see, somewhere here will be a good example. Where's their main example? Camera. So lots of options. Let's see, get picture. Okay, I think I think this is the one we want to to use to start off with. 
If you're in the documentation, find the spot of camera, get picture, and read it. And the example here, we're going to use, we're going to use this one. So find that spot and copy that whole example chunk of code. I'll explain what it means in a moment, and then we will use it to take a photo. So hopefully you commented out all of that sound and vibration stuff, because that's going to annoy you pretty fast. And so after that stuff, I will paste in everything that I got before the load name. Looking at what we have, the very first section here, navigator.camera.getPicture, and the example is unsuccess callback function, which is defined right below, or onfail callback function, which is defined right below. And then open curly brace, close curly brace, and a JSON string that says quality colon 50. So from 0 to 100, the quality of the, of, the, of the picture. If we look at the documentation, we can force to save this as a JPEG or as a ping. We can set sizes and all of these things. But, but a, couple of, a couple of options are being requested. The quality of the picture, make it 50%. And then the destination type, basically, um, the destination is that, um, actually, let me confirm that the destination is. Huh, OK. Uh, OK, I think we'll be OK. The, this is um, taking. Well, this might not actually quite work. We'll give it. A, we'll do it as is, and then we'll see what happens. But I think it might it might not exactly work how I think it should work. But anyway, here it's more like retrieving a lo a file location of a picture. Um, I don't think we specified the option to save it first, but we'll see. So if this worked, what it will do is it will call the onSuccess function passing through data. Notice we don't have up here something. It's going to pass it through automatically in this case because it's a callback. It expects a callback. So it'll pass through the image URI, the image address. Where is the picture stored? Um, we're going to display it on screen, so we'll need a little bit of setup. We will have some sort of image placeholder. We have document.getElementById_image. There's some element on the screen with an ID of image. Not yet. We'll create one. We're going to get a reference to that placeholder, and then we're going to set the source of that image tag to the image's address that we successfully got. If it didn't, if we weren't able to get the picture, then it'll invoke the onFail function that will pass data in. This could be anything. It could be image URI again, but it's message. And then a simple pop-up that'll say failed because, and then whatever the device message is kicking back. So in order for this to work, this will happen right away. As soon as the app loads, it'll try to take a photo. That's kind of weird. I want a button to for us to click to try to take the photo. So what we will actually do is wrap a function around navigator.camera. Function snap picture. So that navigator.camera, uh, so that it doesn't happen automatically, let's put it in a function. Function, snap picture, open close parentheses, of course be very careful that you close that parentheses, I mean the parentheses, 
and the curly brace. Make sure you close those curly braces. This function needs to be invoked, so we will just use the um, jQuery way that we've done it before. We will need to create a button in the HTML eventually. This will work with any button, but we'll just specify a specific button, BTN camera, on click. Function snap picture so we, we're setting ourselves up that some button will invoke the snap picture function so that means we need to create a button in the HTML and we need to create a placeholder that will display that picture on screen Maybe just to see it very quickly, we'll add it to the home screen um, instead of figuring out how it relates to our app. We'll just put it on the home screen of our app just to see it and use it. So we will need to open the index file and we will put it on the home screen. Okay, I see on line 66 there's a there's a grid item there, grid element. So a h ref pound sign will it'll be a dummy link data roll button. You can copy and paste to make it a lot faster. Data icon camera. ID. This is how that JavaScript code knows that when this is clicked to use it. BTN camera. It's an A tag we're wrapping around. Camera. It's a link camera, but data roll makes it a button. Camera icon. But the most important part is that it's got an ID of BTN camera. That's the that's the um, trigger that we're using in the jQuery selector. We need a placeholder, um, so I will put this outside of the grid block, or else it might be a little weird. Mm, well, we'll see what it looks like. Actually, so I'll put it in block B, which is the same column as where the button is, so in theory the picture should appear below the button on the right side. We'll create an image tag src set to nothing just yet because we don't have a picture to show yet but we need an ID so that the JavaScript can load the picture into this into this spot and the pre-made code that we copied and pasted I was calling this my image Remember there was var image equals document dot get element by ID my image and the second line said image dot source equals it's empty right now so if all of this works it should then uh, get a picture into into the uh, placeholder I 
believe that's all we need. Go ahead and save it and run it. Virtual device will work adequately. Browser, I think, will be pretty disappointing. Real device should work the best. Let's see what it uh, looks like. Let's see, so it's coming up on my device. I have a brand new button that says camera. Tap that. It's loading up the camera. Okay, everyone smile. Took a photo on mine. I took a photo and then I've got cancel to try again or accept it. So depending on your device, however you take a photo, I just tapped and it took the photo. And then I have to accept it. So I'll click the check mark and then on my device, I get a photo. Not exactly how I thought, but it gave me a photo. Let's see if I can show you here on my, on my item here. I can't show you everything because it loses focus. But I took a photo. You can kind of see the room right there. You see, oh, there you are right there. Come on. <laughs> So, um, it put the picture really big, which we can then, um, which we can then shrink. But for the moment, it's kind of working. The code of the JavaScript as is worked pretty well. Again, what we changed was we had we put it in a function so that it's triggered by something. A little bit better, just quick and dirty. I will put a little CSS here. Obviously, a class would be a lot better, uh, some real CSS. But just to show it here, I will then also add some style uh, width of 100%. That should shrink it down to its container. Right now, it's not obeying the size of the container. So adding some quick style to that will hopefully put that there. I'm going to check. I'm curious here. I'm going to look at my Photos app. I don't believe it's saved to the memory card yet because it's missing one particular option. Still not shrinking it down to the right size, but via some CSS we would um, control that.
there's there's my photo. I can of course um, style it a little bit more with CSS. Conceptually, though, did any of you get your real device working to take a real photo? A few people. Okay, good. What's that? Oh, okay. Let me show that as well. If I try to capture the picture and then I cancel it, and if I back up and cancel, I get a pop-up alert. Failed because camera canceled. So in my case, I canceled it and it gave me that kind of failure. Perhaps your camera crashed. Did it say what kind of error of that alert? What does it say? Error capturing image. Okay, again, there might be some particular little bit of bad luck at the moment that your camera uh, uh, app crashed and it didn't capture the photo, so it gave us back a, a possible error message. So over at the camera documentation here, I could read and see many more things. There might be some other options that I could add there. Uh, picture library and thumbnails. So sample. Oh, this is this is new. Sample. Take a picture. Select pictures from the gallery and get thumbnails. So there's one over here. Set options. Open camera selection. Oh, this is new. This might work even better. And then display image. This one. This one mentions here the content security policy. There's the example of selecting a picture from your library. So if you've got pictures that you want to try to load up, there's the option here. Uh, we have s source type saved photo album. So there's a type so that you can load from your camera, uh, your phone's camera roll. And I would look at these examples and see how I can uh, change them to work on my own particular device. Um, they're doing it a little bit differently where if you want to, <coughs> to show multiple um, options, you write your options, they did it in this cool way where instead of listing every particular option, they've uh, put them into uh, a, an object, meaning that what we've been doing is when we wrote here, quality, comma, destination type, and then we can do comma this, comma this, comma that. To keep it a little bit clean, these examples are putting your variable, you're putting your options into variables. Um, right here, the source type, options and all of that, and then running them that way. So looking ahead, if this worked, well, your device, your, your app can take a photo. Conceptually for our app, uh, not quite necessary. I, I didn't quite plan, it, plan to use it, but if we think about it, this app eventually is, is going to store class information. I suppose what we could also save is some particular photo. You know, if I want to take a photo I'm, I'm, we're going to save catalog information, whatever information we want, and we could save photos as well. Uh, so this could be something we'll revisit, but for the moment, if it worked, great. If not, um, we'll have lab in just a moment. But the idea is that we have all of these features of Cordova that we will be able to access, and any that are not part of basic Cordova, we can find a plugin out there that someone released. It's up to you then to put it together in, into a tangible way that does something. And we will not go through each one of these line by line and 
see how everything works because not everyone needs these. Not everyone needs the camera for their app. Not everyone needs to know, uh, well, how do I access context, contacts of my app? Whatever you, your own personal app you wanted to do, there will be documentation of it. We have a goal of what we're trying to do in our particular app, so we'll strive toward that. We're going to end the lecture in, in a moment, so any general questions on what we've talked about? Okay, so I will put the latest version of my code in the network folder in just a moment. I will upload the videos. Remember to request them if you haven't done so yet and to re-watch them and to keep up to date with them. So that's it for the moment.